All right, family, continuing on with today's episode of Locked on Saints and taking a look at Michael Thomas, who was named the number eight wide receiver in ESPN's top 10 list, just one day removed from Alvin Kamara being named the number two running back. I talked about how I thought that that placement for Alvin Kamara was fair, considering that the number one placement was a guy that ran for 2,000 yards last season. There's only eight players in NFL history to ever do that. Funny enough, two of them were Tennessee Titans with uh, Chris Johnson also getting that done. But when it comes down to it, when you look at these guys and you look at the wide receivers across the NFL, I understand the sort of, let's say, wanting to kind of distance themselves from Michael Thomas based on the injury last year. But if you're looking at all things equal and a healthy Michael Thomas going into next season, there's not a lot of reason to really back off of him. And one of the things that a lot of different national analysts continue to do is hedge Michael Thomas based upon the fact that Drew Brees won't be around. But I think that that's a little bit, excuse me, I think that that's very short-sighted. And it's extremely diminishing of Michael Thomas's talent as a wide receiver with and without the future Hall of Famer in Drew Brees. Because let's not forget that in the four games that Taysom Hill and Michael Thomas played together, you had 37 targets from Taysom Hill in that game to Michael Thomas. So he's going to get the targets. You also know, because we talked about it several times here, that Jameis Winston before the 2019 season was noted by Pro Football Focus as targeting outside receivers 43.1% of the time, second most since 2009, despite having only been in the NFL for four years at that time. You also look at the fact that with Taysom Hill over the course of the four games that he played uh, with Michael Thomas, you saw Michael Thomas reel in seven and a half catches as well as 85.8 yards receiving per game in those four games, including a game to where, uh, actually two games in which Michael Thomas had 105 and 104 receiving yards against the rival Atlanta Falcons, proving that even though you have a high ankle sprain, you can still be very much on brand and you love to see it. Uh, The other thing about that is that you also had the Denver Broncos game in there with Taysom Hill through for less than 80 yards in that matchup. If that's not enough for you, then look at the year before that with Teddy Bridgewater, five games With Teddy Bridgewater, you saw him average 8.4 catches per game. And let me make sure I get close when I say this. I'm probably going to get fuzzy, but that's fine. 110.2 yards per game receiving without Drew Brees. So I'm not really concerned about Michael Thomas's production without Drew Brees, especially considering that this is also still a Sean Payton scheme, right? Sean Payton's scheme is perfect for a guy like Michael Thomas who always wins on the inside breaking routes, who, yes, can play close to the line of scrimmage, but is also a, does a great job with deep, uh, sort of the deep over routes, the deep ins, the deep digs, all the other things that he does that take him into the middle of the field and allow him to compete for a catch. Oh, and not to not to rule out, obviously, his ability to be impeccable when it comes to timing routes on the outside for those outside breaking routes as well to make sure that there are those back shoulder throws, which I think you're going to see a lot of either the back shoulder throws or the throws that are perfectly placed and sort of schemed up to be only where Michael Thomas can catch them. Let's admit easily here that nor Jameis Winston nor uh, Taysom Hill have the ability to be the most accurate passer in the NFL like Drew Brees was. There's no reason to expect that, right? There's no reason to expect that it's going to be exactly the way that it was with Drew Brees. That would just be foolish. However, This scheme still benefits a guy like Michael Thomas and therefore benefits guys like Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill, whichever one of them end up winning the starting role. And let's not forget, too, that Taysom Hill also completed over 70% of his passes over the course of those four games as well, completing 30 of those 37 targets to, uh, to Michael Thomas alone. So I just have a bit of a problem with ruling Michael Thomas out this much, dropping him from your number two wide receiver ahead of the 2020 season to the number eight wide receiver. I'm not even going to talk bad about the wide receivers that are ranked above them because it's not their fault. It's not about them. It's about the rankings. The other thing too is that like when it comes to top 10 rankings, it's the top three and then it's everybody else because everybody else you can argue should be anywhere between four to 10 and everybody within the top three you can argue should be between one and three and you can argue the order. All that I'm concerned about here is the amount that they've allowed Michael Thomas to drop in their perception. Everyone around the NFL knows who Michael Thomas is. Everyone around the NFL knows what Michael Thomas is and can be without Drew Brees. We've all seen it. It's not just me. I'm not telling you anything that you don't know, and I'm not saying anything that they don't know. So that's where it becomes a little bit kind of shocking to see something like this. The last thing that I'll mention about this is also that just a reminder of who Michael Thomas is in case anyone has forgotten because of the the injury that he suffered. 
last season, the 149 reception guy that broke an NFL record just two years ago. Let's not forget the fact that we're also talking about the New Orleans Saints, who have only three triple digit catch seasons by pass catchers in their franchise history. And all three of those are named Michael Thomas. Let's not forget who Michael Thomas is just because he had a high ankle sprain. He had a deltoid injury, some things that led to legitimate offseason surgery that he worked very hard to play through to do everything that he could to make sure that he was around to try to get Drew Brees a ring on his way out. Let's not let a catchless game during a game, uh, during a, a playoff game where the Saints offense just collectively fell apart, if we're being honest. Let's not let that define who Michael Thomas has been and who will continue to be. I think there's still a lot of reason to be excited about him going into 2021. So don't let a number eight ranking make you feel like that's not true.